Judging by the sign, you should know where we're at. Or at least, this is the only thing that's left designated where this is. Let me take you there. Before I take you there, let me give you a backstory on Smoking Unit. He was a designer and held other jobs related to the sport and was best known for being a mechanic, builder, and crew chief. As a NASCAR mechanic, Smokey gained 57 NASCAR Cup Series wins and two championships, 51 and 53, with driver Herb Thomas driving the Fabulous Hudson Hornet, the Fabulous Hudson Hornet as Doc Hudson in the movie Cars, in which actually Smokey Unit's character was portrayed in Cars 3 as kind of like the crew chief mechanic of Doc Hudson. If you want to know more details about Smokey, just read his autobiography. The best damn garage in town, the world as Smokey sees it. Also, his audiobook, Sex Lies and Super Speedways, which is absolutely narrated by John DeLorean of all people. I have to say, that's probably the best title I've ever heard for a book ever. For more detail, check that stuff out. Now, this is Riverside Park in Holly Hill. 957 North Beach Street, Holly Hill, Florida. Was the home of horsepower in Days on the Beach. This is actually where the best damn garage in town was. Smoky Unix shop. Legendary Smoky Unix shop. Kind of give you the lay of the land. Right in this area, right here. This would have been right in this area where the sign was that said best damn garage in town. And he would have like billboards out, powering mechanics. It stood probably like this high in this area. Where it was, the legendary garage. Now you can still see the pavement of where the front parking lot was. Now back in the day, Smokey was a, a licensed international truck dealer. So you would see like international scouts and stuff all around this area of where he was, it was for sale. Now as you can see, I'm not the only one that knows this, where the spot was. I did not put this here, this was already here, I swear to God. But it's pretty cool, fans still love this man, and know they make the pilgrimage out to this spot. Well, there was a building over here that was a storage area that Smokey used, and that caught fire in 2011, which was the last building in this spot. But in the front part here, you can still see the driveway and stuff and some of the front parking lot still remains. This would have been like the main entrance in the shop. Storage area over here, the main garage for working on trucks is over here. In this area. Parking lot over here. On this side of the there was a restaurant over here that had nothing to do with Smoky Eunuch. But I'm sure his employees ate there. But this was would have been the side of the main truck shop. Now, if you went further back, there was another entrance right over here behind the storage building that held the fab shop, the dino shop, the engine dino shop. His daughter had a bird shop that was back further back in the corner. Between the truck and the storage shop, there was an overhang. There was an open garage here, but there was an overhang covering the drive-in area. Could keep it covered? Because, you know, Florida has, like, various <laughs> sporadic rains. It gets kind of hot. So the more shade is possible, the more the better. This is a legendary property of where that garage was at. It's a damn shame. You know, in his will, he wanted he didn't want to be a shrine. He didn't want to be a museum. So this would kind of what happened to the area. If you want to see like a lot of his legendary stuff, Don Garlic's museum has a lot of it. He has his uh, engine dyno, a few of his engines that he built, especially for Hudson and Chevrolet, Pontiac Fiera vapor car that he built. Don Gullers has that. It's just very historical stuff. What a mechanical genius he was. Here's some brick from the building. That was right here. Where the I'm assuming that's where the garage. It's, it's very crazy stuff. Just to think, like, what came out of this property? What was on this property? It's just mind blowing. Just think like the 7th, 8th Chevelle was built, or the 7th, 8th Chevelle, should I say, was built on this property. The car, 
that they took out the gas tank and he drove from Daytona Beach from the racetrack to here. That's probably about five or six miles from the infield of Daytona International Speedway to here. <laughs> it's just, it makes you laugh, especially as a mechanic, uh, how crazy his stories can be. The like tall tales and mechanical engineering that actually happened. It's just crazy to be out here. It's unfortunate, like, a lot of these people driving by, walking through the property, don't even know what was here and what a great man he was. You still, even though it's like a blank field, it's just in awe of what was here. Let me uh, get you on the back part of this, show you where exactly the stuff was. Back side of the property, there's the front. That's what would have been the front. This probably would have been almost a side entrance. Okay, the fab shop and the dino shop were right in this area. Where the engine dino shop was here, the fab shop was kind of back towards back here a little bit. But this is where those race cars were built and tested. Late at night, it was not strange. A roaring small block Chevy or a Hudson motor just going crazy. Back here, back in the day. In 1946, smoking unit moved dates on a beach and married his wife after he got out of the war in World War II. And while he was in the war for training in B-17 bombers, he would actually fly over Daytona Beach, loved the place so much, opened the garage a year later, and started making business just working on cars and trucks, mostly heavy trucks. But he still had a passion for racing, so he did that as well. Late at night, take the phone off the hook, and just go to town this engine dial back here. Tinkering, doing whatever to get the most out of that motor to his expectations and then take it to the next track to make the best thing ever. That shop lasted here until 1987, claiming there was no good, good mechanics in town, which is the reason why he closed. That lasted until the shop was vacant with no service from 87 until they had an auction in 98. 2003, 2004 is when they started dismantling all the buildings except for the storage building that caught fire in 2011. They just leveled everything out. This is what we have today. It's just an empty lot. But there's a lot of history here. Also, Smoky Unit won the 1961 Days 2500 with Marvin Panch. Driving a year old Pontiac Bonneville, Pontiac loaded the field with 61 Catalinas, which his teammate Fireball Roberts was dominating the race early and blew a motor. But prior to the start of the race, there was team orders between Marvin Panch and Fireball Roberts given by Smokey. I don't want my cars being too close together in case there was a big wreck. Fireball Roberts leads the race to have Marvin Panch in the back of the field to keep them separate. But once Fireball fell out of the race, Marvin was drafting off other cars and eventually worked his way up to the front and won the race. But Pontiac wasn't too happy that a year old car beat all their new Catalinas. It's kind of a bittersweet victory for Pontiac. Probably the coolest thing that people really don't talk about was 1962 Speed Weeks. The hometown team of Smokey Eunuch, Fireball Roberts, and Stevens Pontiac swept Speed Weeks, meaning that. Fireball Roberts participated in a sedan race early February of 1962, came back with Smoky Eunuch, which is now a Gatorade dual race, won that, won the pole for qualifying for the Daytona 500, won the Daytona 500, then came back in July and won the Firecracker 400, all in that same car. That same Pontiac Catalina won all those races all in the same year. Besides his Daytona history, he had Indianapolis history. From 1958 to 1973, Smokey Unit participated in the Indianapolis 500 as a mechanic. His most famous car is like the Reverse Torque Special, which was they raced in 1960 where the engine was in the center and it was reversed. The, the engine ran in reverse compared to what it is normally. Like the engine was in the center of the car, the driver was in a pod on the left side, the furthest left front you could get to get that balance right. And it, it just looked freaky, but it made the Indianapolis 500 in 1960. 1962, Smokey Unit changed up real racing forever when he mounted a wing on Jim Rathman's Simon's Business Special Watson Roadster. 
The wind designed to increase the downforce allowed Rasmund to reach warning speeds there before seeing it in Indianapolis, but created so much drag it actually caused the car to record slower lap times. USAG immediately banned the use of wings, but 72 USAG once again allowed wings to be used on their race cars. Smokey Unit also built a 1968 Camaro for Trans Am racing. Smokey Unit set several speedway nourish records with the car at Bonham Speedway. With both 302 small block the 396 big block. They were won a race while Smokey owned it and was later sold to Don Yanko and won several races with it. Some of the modifications on the car it had acid dip body panels, thinner window glass to reduce the weight, the front end of the body tilted downwards, and the windshield laid back for aerodynamic advantages. In 1993, Vic Elbrock Jr. purchased and restored the car. Who owns it presently today? Smokey, he passed, but his legacy lives on. He still has his induct the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America in 1990, which is now moved from Detroit, Michigan to Daytona Beach a couple years ago. Has not yet been inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, which is well deserving. He definitely deserves to be in that, even though he had controversy with the France family and NASCAR pretty much up until his death, really. Smokey Unix, best damn garage in town. Lots of history here. Lots of drivers been here. Lots of patrons at Daytona Beach have serviced their cars here because they trust this man. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you.